everybody and welcome to Digital Discovery, our exploration of the collections of the museum for you, our early learners. My name is Liz and I'm the Early Education Specialist here at Berkshire Museum and I'm going to guide you on today's discovery. So let's just jump right on in. Hi everybody and welcome to today's Digital Discovery. Today we're going to talk about ancient Egypt and their love of pets. What does ancient mean? Well, ancient means a really long time ago. Like, really, really long. Now at Berkshire Museum, we are really big fans of ancient Egyptian culture. One of our most popular collection pieces is Pahat the Mummy. You might have seen him in the room that is bright orange. Pahat tells us a story about a land of people who found rituals really, really important. The ancient Egyptians. One thing Pahat, who was a priest, can tell us a lot about is ancient Egyptian rituals. Egyptians had rituals for all sorts of things like festivals or their faith or burials. I mean, we all know about mummification, right? That was a ritual. Another thing that was really important besides rituals to ancient Egyptians were their animals. Animals weren't just seen as pets or livestock. They were also seen as their gods. Many representations of Egyptian gods were drawn with half a human body and the other half was like an animal head. Half and half. Well, for example, there's Horus, the god of the sky, who has a head of a falcon. There is also Anubis, the god of mummification, who has a head of a jackal, which is kind of like a dog, a really small dog. Or even Bast, who was the goddess of protection, had a head like a cat. The Egyptians believed in many gods and goddesses, and almost all of them are shown with the body of a human, and the head of an animal. Because animals were so important in the rituals and beliefs of this culture, that made their counterparts, their pets, just as important as well. Now, Egyptians had some pretty cool animals as well. Besides just some of the first breeds of domesticated dogs or cats, they also kept animals like birds and gazelles and monkeys and fish and mongooses. Do you guys know what a mongoose is? That is a lot of different animals. Wouldn't it be wild to have a pet monkey or a pet hippo? Where would you keep it? Where would you feed it? The pets of ancient Egypt were beloved by their owners, very much in the same way that we love our animals today. Maybe in some ways more. Sometimes these animals were so loved, like I mean so loved, that when their owners died, they buried the pets with them. The idea was that for Egyptians, when they went to the afterlife, if their pets were buried with them, they would go with them. When they got to the place they were going after death, they would be there together forever. Now that is some serious love. At Berkshire Museum, we have a mummified Egyptian animal. What could it be? Is it a dog? Is it a cat? <laughs> no, it's a mummified hawk. How neat is that? At some point when this hawk was found by archeologists, it was brought along to us at the museum to keep in our collections and keep safe um, so people could study and look at it for lots of years. It might have been a pet, it might have not been a pet, but either way, it was really important to that person that was buried all those years ago in ancient Egypt. Do you have something that's that important with you that you want to keep forever? Now, that was a ton of really cool information about ancient Egyptians and their love of pets. We talked about the kind of pets they had, how important they were, if they might be buried with them for forever. I mean, lots of things. Whew, ha, huh. I don't know about you, but that took a lot out of me. So why don't we jump into a brain break? Come on, let's go. Hey everyone.
everyone. My name's Allie, and I'm here to introduce you to my pal, Special Agent John Doggett. Doggett is a mixed breed, but primarily is a Basenji. This breed is originally from Central Africa and was bred as a barkless hunter. So believe it or not, he has no bark. These dogs were sent all the way up the Nile as gifts to pharaohs in ancient Egypt. Now you see a lot of the traits that are in Doggett's face right in those walls of pharaoh tombs. So you'll see his pointed ears, his long neck, and his snout in a lot tombs. of tombs. Some refer to this dog as a jackal, but really it is based on the Basenji. Isn't that awesome? Now, I know my cat makes me smile, and that's important. So I thought we could check out some of the other pets that make the staff of Berkshire Museum smile. Let's go see what they look like. For our digital discovery adventure, we create our own pets at home. <laughs> it's a simple craft project that just involves paper plates, paints, markers or pencils, whatever you have, uh, construction paper, scissors, and googly eyes if you have them. You simply decide the animal that you want to create. It can be a dog, a cat, a goldfish, a pet rock, any of it. You use your crafting supplies and create that pet on the paper plate. You let it dry and voila, there you go. It's how you use it once it dries. That's what makes it fun. That gets all the imagination flowing. Like you could sit there, but it could hold your lunch. Or you could do what I did and you put some string in it and you go use it as a kite. Sadly, my goldfish kite got away from me and it, it's somewhere out there now. Whoops. <laughs> if you see a goldfish attached to some string just floating around Berkshire Museum, that was me. Whoops. <laughs> Paper plate goldfish is no more for me, but I had fun playing with it. I got creative and enjoyed my discovery. Hope you guys can do it too. I'll see you later. Bye.